Hello, dear friends. Uh, this is Samant Vanta, and I'm providing you some Avakas lecture, lecture on Avakas, uh, especially uh, related to his uh, uh, impact on structure. Uh, it includes low velocity impact, high velocity impact, or uh, hyper velocity impact. So in the last uh, couple of uh, uh, lectures, I provided the low velocity impact case in my YouTube account. So anyone can refer it from my YouTube account uh, with the name Samad Fanta. Uh, and also there is also another new YouTube, uh, the name called Advanced Engineering uh, uh, Lectures. Okay, so from that you can check uh, two lectures, the previous two uh, lectures, which is well framed and you can get uh, a brief idea of low velocity impact on that. And it is made in step by step. So I invite you to check my YouTube there. Uh, that is Samantha Fanta YouTube. Okay, so let me uh, do for high velocity impact. Uh, here also I will go uh, step by step, uh, starting from the very scratch. So please follow me. Uh, this will give you a, a better idea on how to model uh, high velocity impact on structures that is bullet impact to some particular structures. So let me share some uh, slides uh, regarding this. So high velocity impact is uh, the type of impact uh, that happen in the structural material, uh, particularly uh, in aerospace as well as in other application also. So for today, I consider a steel structure, uh, a structural plate made from steel, which is impacted by a small bullet, which is fired at uh, a velocity of uh, 1,000 millimeter per second, and the mass of uh, 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 bullet is considered uh, 100 gram, which is impacting the steel as the center. Okay, so uh, so this is why structural uh, steels has an important part uh, or property that it is ability to resist large deformation without fracture. But it's, uh, it, it will fracture when large amount of energy will uh, impart on it from the bullet, then it will penetrate. The penetration may happen. And at the same time, the uh, plastic strain development also there. So large part of the formation occur during yielding. So uh, when it is uh, uh, damaged with, uh, to the yield point, uh, then uh, we can observe the damage on that. So the meter therefore takes into account the behavior of member as it stress beyond the yield stress. So here the case is uh, when it is in in elastic or plastic region. So that is uh, the thing. Uh, another here we have material property of uh, the uh, steel material and the material property of the impactor also there. So the steel material is considered uh, having uh, that is known mass of uh, density. The mass density of steel is 7. Point, uh, it is 7,800 kilogram per meter cube. Uh, the youngest modulus is uh, 210 uh, megapascal, no, 210, thousand megapascal and the poison ratio is 0 0.3 and the plastic city properties uh, when it is uh, from experimental uh, part what we, we get is yield stress from 750 to uh, 1120 and the plastic strain taken from 0 to 4.2 uh, strain so uh, this is plastic city and another property which is important uh, here uh, to analyze the strain effect of the uh, and the damage of the structure, uh, particularly of the uh, uh, 
the tile material. We have the tile damage uh, with parameters fracture strain, stress triagility, uh, strain rate. These values are given. And the damage evolution uh, is also considered 0 0.022 uh, millimeter uh, from displacement. Uh, so these are the uh, parameters. So in the modeling, as usual, uh, we have, uh, we uh, make use of all important steps, modeling the part, that is modeling the impactor and modeling the plate. Impactor is modeled with uh, deformable uh, type of plate with dimension 100 by 100 by 2 millimeter. And the impactor is considered as a rigid uh, impactor and having a diameter of 10 millimeter, mass of uh, uh, 100 gram, and the velocity of, at the point of impact considered 10,000 millimeter per second. So we'll create these two parts. Then we'll go for material property definition. We'll define the material property for the plate. And the material property considered for the impactor also will be defined and assign the material properties. Then the next third step is assembling two parts. That is uh, properly assembling them into proper uh, assembly. The fourth one is the step that allows us to define the type of analysis. So our analysis is dynamic explicit. Uh, with uh, in impact uh, moment of 0 0.004, that means four micro uh, millisecond. And the interaction is also should be made in between two, the plate and the impactor, because at the, uh, there must be some proper interaction in between them, that is surface to surface explicit interaction uh, with general contact algorithm also applied. And the mesh is considered as the C3D8 arc uh, type of uh, mesh. That means solid 3D uh, uh, mesh with uh, reduced integration approach. And the load, uh, the particular load here is the impact load, which is given in terms of uh, velocity and mass. So for the, the impactor, uh, mass uh, that velocity will be assigned through the reference point. And for the uh, plate, we'll fix the, all the four boundaries. That means clamped, clamped, clamped boundaries are considered. And bullet is allowed only to move in Z direction uh, with the velocity of 10,000 millimeter per second. And the last step is running the job. Okay, so these steps will be considered in our work. So uh, in order to analyze this, uh, let's see some simulation related with this work. I have made uh, some simulation before, so let's run it and see, and then we'll go uh, the new model from the very scratching or from the very beginning. So uh, let me share you uh, this another, uh, the, the pre-created model first. So this is the model which is created, okay? Uh, so as I explained for you, we have two parts, bullet and the steel plates are created, okay? Uh, this is the steel plate. Another is the bullet. So this is the bullet considered in our uh, analysis, okay? You can see the shape. Okay, and uh, the properties defined for the bullet is only mass, okay, at reference point. Okay, through reference point, we define a reference point is given here. In this case, this is the reference point. Actually, in actual case, the reference point should be placed at the mass center. Anyways, let's take this point as reference point and assign uh, mass, okay. And 
plates and bullet bores material properties are defined. For the plate, the material property defined here is, okay, uh, we have uh, ductile uh, damage properties. We have uh, ductile damage property evaluation. Again, density, okay, elastic city, okay, plastic cities are defined here. Okay, then these material properties are assigned to the plate. Uh, the next is the plate is uh, assembled with the uh, impactor. Okay, so then some kind of uh, uh, movements like translations, rotations, in order to get proper position of the plate and the impactor as we require. So that is done. Then after uh, the next uh, step is uh, creating uh, dynamic explicit steps, okay, of 0 0.04 uh, uh, millisecond or 0 0.004 second is considered of us and impact uh, time. One thing here in the part creation, we created two regions of the part. One is the, the region which is away from impact. That is considered as uh, the damage is uh, less estimated there. But we need the critical region in which impactor will hit the structure. And the local uh, damage will take place on the, uh, this region. So uh, that region needs some kind of dense mesh or a number of elements uh, should be, higher number of elements should be required in this region. So during meshing, we will provide higher mesh at the center than the part away from the center. So then the next is creating interaction. Interaction is created for in between, interaction between the impactor and the plate. So the plate is uh, taken some set of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that set of, here we have uh, some sets, okay? Um, so the master surface uh, and the uh, slave surface condition, that's the surface to surface contact uh, relates master and the slave surface. So uh, the impactor is the one which imparts damage. So it is considered as the master surface and the surface on the uh, nodes of the structure is considered as the second surface. Second surface is considered as a slave surface anyway. And also the uh, constraints of the uh, impactor is uh, already provided with a body element, uh, okay? Uh, rigid body element with uh, peak point at the reference point that is also defined the next okay the next thing is uh, here uh, we have to assign the output variables that field outputs and uh, history output variables should be defined here according to your requirement anyways for us uh, i will use the default output only by setting the uh, reference, uh, no, the status variable only. The status is on only. The remaining is the default setting I use. Okay, then uh, once interaction is done, the next is load and boundary. So clamped boundary conditions are considered here. This is a clamped boundary condition. And uh, the impactor is allowed to move only in Z direction with a velocity of 10,000 meter per second, okay? And the motion of uh, the impactor is only in the U3 direction. The remaining motions are constrained or given zero displacement, okay? So this is uh, what we, and then mesh is created with uh, uh, more dense mesh at the center, okay, and coarse mesh at the outer, and the impactor is 
uh, mesh do is the default uh, mesh. Okay, so then the material property here is uh, analysis, uh, explicit analysis with 3D stress. And we produce, uh, we have to uh, select this element deletion, yes, that once the material damaged, it should be deleted. Or oh, then that allows uh, the system uh, not to overlook the deleted element with undeleted element or damaged element with undamaged element should not over uh, one cross over another. That produces uh, uh, spurious deformation or uh, false uh, result in our work. So in order to avoid those things, we select this. So finally, C3D8R, that is eight nodes linear brick reduce integration or gas control is selected. Okay, so uh, this is the mesh type. Uh, so we use this type of mesh. Finally, the model is run and uh, successfully completed because uh, I followed all the step uh, in proper manner so that uh, there is no um, error on that, that's why it is uh, completed. So then let's see the result of this model. Okay, this is uh, undamaged uh, mesh or plot undeformed shape. Okay, this is the shape when it is deformed. Okay, so this is a deformed shape. Uh, and also plot contour on deformed shape. We can see the contour plot of deformed shape. And at the same time, we can simulate the model. Let's simulate it and let's see what happened. So this is the simulation. Okay, this is the simulation. You can observe the exit and the entry of the bullet in this manner. Yeah, this is the damage pattern. Okay, so let's see the uh, deformation. This is a deformation, U3. What about U2? And the U1, they are not uh, because U1 and the U2 are less suffer. So it is most deformation on U3 direction. Okay. And uh, what about the stress? Let's see. Uh, this is by default, that is one misses stress uh, counter. So let's see stress one counter, stress two counter. Stress three contour and others also. Okay, so what about the um, this? Uh, let's see future uh, future age. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, we can model it one by one. Uh, the interested one uh, will follow me. So uh, this is okay now. So exterior edge. By default, it is in exterior edge, so that's why. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let me show you uh, the model from the very beginning. Let me uh, start modeling a new one. Uh, this is uh, not, this is already free created one. So it might not give you an appropriate uh, knowledge. 
So uh, let me go to new model. Okay, share. Uh, okay, new window. Share. Yeah, this is new window. On that, I will start from the scratch. Okay, the first thing is creating a plate. So uh, create part. So the name of uh, plate is steel plate, steel. 3D deformable solid extrusion option is selected. And then take a rectangle, create an rectangle, sorry. Uh, and create dimension of 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter. So uh, this is the plate. Actually, we can bring the plate into middle. Anyway, let it be there. And uh, the thickness of the plate is two millimeter. Okay, so this is the plate. Uh, uh, let me create partition on the plate in order to identify critical regions and the less critical region. So uh, let me make partition. I'll create the model very quickly. So please uh, pay attention. Okay, let this be critical region. Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, and let me extrude this thing through the thickness of the plate. Extrude along the direction. Okay, then create partition. Then now this part having two sections: the inner critical region and the outer less critical region. Okay, now let's create another part that is. Um, an impactor. So an impactor is a discrete rigid impactor. I need the discrete rigid uh, from shale revolution. Let me use this option. Okay. So for this, let me simply take um, the dimension that is uh, uh, diameter 10 means radius 5. And then uh, let's take this model as the model for bullet. And let's remove unnecessary uh, edge. Someone can uh, provide some grooves and other thing as much as he needs. Okay, this is the geometry and 360 degree rotation, 360. This is uh, considered as a bullet. Okay, we have two parts. One is the bullet and another one is the uh, plate. So let's assign a reference point for the bullet. Uh, let me assign a reference point at this point. Okay, so we can see RP, that is a reference point. So I will provide mass as well as bullets to through this reference point. And then the next is go to property. Then in the property, uh, for the bullet, the only property that I can provide is the mass here. Okay, so mass property of the bullet will be assigned. So special inertia, create. Uh, point mass, okay, through this reference point. Okay, now that is the mass is 100 gram. Okay, 100 gram of mass is already given. Uh, the next uh, part is uh, a steel part. So steel part, the properties required are, uh, let me give uh, the name, uh, steel. Okay, general density, which is equal to 7.8 E minus 9, which implies uh, it is torn 
instead of kilogram, we use here ton. Uh, so it is ton per millimeter cube. So that is 7.8. Uh, the next is elastic city. Uh, isotropic material property, because steel is homogeneous isotropic material, uh, it has 210,000 megapascal. Uh, uh, youngest mutas and 0 0.3 uh, poison ratio. And the uh, next is plastic city. Plastic city, plastic. So we have to provide the yield stresses at various points and the uh, corresponding plastic strains because this plastic city is one of an important part uh, because uh, this thing will take place some uh, strain um, uh, rate effect. So let's give some values from experimental that is already given in the previous lecture. So let me provide uh, these values 750 at zero plastic strain, 800 uh, at uh, 0 0.001, sorry, 0 0.01. Uh, okay, 820, uh, 0.02, 839, uh, 0.1, uh, 890, uh, 0.16, uh, 920, uh, which is correspond to 4, 5, 4, 6, okay. Uh, 950, it is in megapascal actually, one, and uh, 1120. There are some values also, 4.2. This is taken from experimental setup. And the next is um, once uh, we can go for uh, damage for tactile material, uh, tactile damage. On this detail damage, uh, we have to define uh, fracture strain, stra stress triangulality, strain rate. So this should be defined. So fracture strain one, uh, zero, and strain rate, the second, 0 0.6, 0 0.39, and 30. And then the damage evolution should be uh, specified through displacement uh, at failure point. That is 0 0.022 is taken. So these are the material properties for uh, particular steel. Okay, let's assign this property. Okay, section, steel section, um, homogeneous. Okay, and then assign the section. Yeah, this is the steel section. Uh, another, uh, the only program for uh, impactor is uh, only uh, mass. So mass is already assigned and we can see here a green color that implies the mass of impactor. Okay, what is the next? Let's go to assembly. Okay, then uh, create an instance. Here, uh, part two is the bullet, sorry. We can change the name. First, let me change the name of uh, bullet. Uh, here we have two parts. Okay, let me rename this part. Uh, that is bullet. Okay, so bullet and steel. Let's assemble them. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, a steel plate. Uh, apply, bullet. Uh, let it, them be separate. Okay, so these are the two instances. And the translating bullet from this point or uh, from some point here, 
to the center of the plate. Okay, now, sorry, uh, I lost connection. Sorry for interruption, it is network problem still. Okay, 90 degree rotation, done. This is the impactor and the plate in proper position now. It is in proper position. Assembly is done. Let's go for uh, step. Okay. Uh, dynamic explicit step is selected. And the time of uh, the duration 0 0.004 millimeter considered. Okay, so here uh, we can see the nonlinear geometric uh, situation. Ni geo, uh, this nonlinear uh, non uh, geometric conditions is on. So again, here let's on the status of uh, damage or, so let me on. And I'm using all the default setting. Okay, now let's come to interaction. Before interaction, let, let, uh, let me go to mesh. Okay, mesh this part. Let it be one. Okay. Uh, it seems coarse mesh. Uh, again, let's mesh this two as a general. And let's uh, give smaller mesh to the inner part. Uh, let this be one. Okay. So local mesh. This is the mesh generated. Yeah, it's a dominated sheet mesh. Let me use this uh, medial axis mesh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Delete existing and let me use medial axis. Yeah, this is the mesh. Now, let's see the assembly. This is the assembly. Uh, it is, I think, proper and seems wow. Okay, once mesh is done, uh, well, let's see the element type. Element type. That is an important thing. And we have to provide the explicit analysis. We are not using standard very explicit analysis, three dimensional linear, reduced integration, and then uh, let's use uh, element deletion to be uh, performed during analysis. So, yes, yeah, that's great. Okay, then uh, this part is done. Uh, let's go back to interaction. Uh, so the part and two parts must uh, give proper interaction. So let me define 
great interaction, uh, general, uh, no, not interaction, but let create contact. Okay, mechanical, tangential behavior, frictionless penalty, this 0 0.3, and then normal behavior, hard contact with default uh, constraint enforcement is taken. And let me define some uh, surface of, uh, let me create surface, okay? Geometric surface of, uh, let me call it as uh, uh, surface of uh, impactor, impactor surface. Yeah only impactor so the brown part of impactor is the normal outward part so it is selected and then uh, let me uh, remove an impactor from the model okay part instant impactor let me remove it and uh, uh, have a plate alone here again uh, define set, create. Okay, now node sets are required. Okay, so these node sets are plate, plate nodes. Plate nodes are uh, the name. Okay, great. So let me select all the nodes. Okay, done. Now let's create an interaction. Okay. Create interaction, surface to surface explicit, continue. The first surface is the master surface that is considered the rigid or the hardest one. So that surface is the surface of the impactor. Okay, uh, let me bring an impactor back. Okay, the surface of impactor is selected. Let highlight, yeah, continue. The second, surface is the uh, slave one that is uh, the one under high damage that is considered the plate so that is no the regions of the plate so that is still set which i called it as a steel set no plate nodes sorry plate nodes is considered uh, okay so these are default uh, settings so that is done this is the interaction that is done. Now uh, let's constrain the impactor to a proper direction. It means uh, create constraints, rigid body. Okay, continue. Body element. This is the body element. Okay. Uh, about this point. Yeah, that's okay. Now, constraint also made. What is left? Only um, load and boundaries are left. Let's create load and the boundary. Okay, create boundary, uh, symmetric, actually symmetric case. Okay, so select this edge four edge yeah that's done in cast turret now the plate is constrained not to move in any direction okay it is in fixed constraint and let's provide velocity of uh, the impactor, okay? The velocity of impactor will be given through reference point, okay? That is 10,000 millimeters per uh, second. 10,000 millimeter per second is given. Okay, it seems upward, so let me give it minus uh, direction. This should be in minus direction because the impactor is moving in the negative z direction. Now it is an appropriate direction. 
Okay, let's create another. Uh, let's constrain the motion of the impactor not to move in any direction about this point also, except U3. U3 means Z along Z direction only. Done. Now, uh, almost done. The remaining thing is um, running the job. So let's create, let's run the job. Job name uh, low, no, high, high velocity impact simulation. Continue. So, okay. Now run the job, submit, submit the job. Let's see what happened. So the job is running. That means uh, uh, we are uh, our modeling steps are okay. So there is no problem. That means we can go back to our previous model. Okay, uh, we can take um, the previous model. Because uh, what we are going to get is almost the same. We'll see it back. Yeah, still it is running. We can monitor the job. <coughs> we can monitor. Means monitoring the job means uh, this part. Here we can see uh, these warnings are there. Uh, if error is there, it will give us error. Um, in login file, we can get these things. Uh, the output, ODB outputs of 20 frames are there. Uh, data files, message files, the status file, everything is here. Okay, so. Uh, step increment time, total time, CPU time, uh, stable time increment, kinetic energy, uh, total energy, everything we can see from here. Okay, that is uh, uh, what we say. Okay, so this is all about. Uh, thank you very much for uh, spending your time uh, with me. Okay, so yeah, thank you.